Blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July 25th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of a portion of Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 9 and verse 11. And I say a portion because it's only going to be a sentence. And this is what it says. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Well, if the race is not to the swift, those who run the fastest and the hardest, who is it to? Well, it would be to the consistent. It would be to those who pace themselves. It's not a sprint race, but it's an endurance race. And it also says it's not to the strong. Why? Because in my weakness, he is made strong. In your weakness, he is made strong. And so what we are to learn from this passage is that the race represents life. And as we experience the turns of life, what we would consider the bad events of life, each and every time we come out on the other side of those bad experiences, our faith should be a little bit more stronger in our Lord our trust in him should be a little bit deeper than when we entered into that circumstance. That's the whole purpose of why bad things happen to good people. That's what Romans chapter 5 tells us. Through these bad events, we learn patience. We understand that there is a purpose for these events in our lives, and we are patiently waiting for God to carry us through these events. Through that patience comes experience. Now that we have experienced God's hand at work in that event, the next time one of those events takes place in our lives, we immediately lean back in the safety of the arms of our Savior because we know that if he was faithful then in the past, he will be faithful now again. And that's called hope. And that's what experience creates hope in Jesus, in our God, who said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And so in our text, we see the race is not to the swift. If you don't think that you're running the fastest, the hardest, then you're exactly where you should be. Because the race of life is not to the swift. The battles of life are not to the strong. It's not our strength that provides security and comfort through these things, but it's his strength that we rely upon. It's his strength that we draw from. That's why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. Now when you read this verse, don't think of a sprint the first one there is the fastest one there, but think of a cross-country race. It's he who paces himself. If you expend all your energy at the front of the race, you're going to have nothing left for the end. So we must steadily and consistently be true and faithful to the things of God in this life, and that will carry us through till the day that we meet him. The writer of Hebrews tells us the same thing in chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, and the witnesses that he's speaking of are mentioned here in chapter 11, which would be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Gideon, Elijah, Samson, David, Daniel, and others. He says, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. With patience. With the mindset of a cross-country runner. And it is this fact that we must be mindful of. We are to be consistent in sharing the love of God that is available to all. We are to be consistent in showing love and serving others. 
We are to be consistent in fellowship with him. We are to be consistent in the reading and the study of his word. We are to be consistent in focusing our minds upon the things of God and not allowing ourselves to be pulled away by the things of this world. We are to be consistent in disciplining our bodies and our attitudes and our emotions so that everything brings glory to him. And yet it's easy for us to become burdened by the fact that we're not doing enough. And that is the mindset of a sprinter. You see, the sprinter sees the finish line before him and is running as fast and as hard as he can to get there. The endurance runner is not thinking of the end goal as much as he is the next checkpoint. And there may be 20, 30, 50 checkpoints between the starting line and the finish of the race. And he's simply going from one checkpoint to the next. If I can only make it to the next checkpoint, I can rest up. I can re-strengthen my body so that when I begin tomorrow, I can work to make it to the next checkpoint. That's to be our mindset, friends. You see, that endurance runner today may have experienced sunshine, clouds, breezes, and singing birds. But tomorrow, he may be running through storms, thunder, lightning, and hell. But he doesn't look back. He presses through because he knows the next day, maybe sunshine, beautiful white clouds, singing birds, and a cool breeze upon his face. So as you run your race today, friends, remember the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Place all your hope, all your faith, all your trust in the God whom you serve as he carries you through the race and the battles of this life. I love you, friends. Now, may your journey be blessed today. May you be full of the Spirit of God, and may you be a blessing to all those whom you come in contact with. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.